Hi, this is Sarah Levin, the Artful Inker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be making this sweet strawberry card. Let's get started. For today's video, we're going to be using the sweet strawberry stamp set. Let me just put this aside and grab a piece of basic white. And then I've got the stamp with the leaves and flowers on it. So we're going to have a blooming uh, strawberry plant. And I just want to set my stamp in the garden green ink. And let me turn this just a little bit. Make sure I'm not off the bottom edge. And I want two of this leafy vine. And again, turning it just to make sure that I'm, gosh, I could make this harder on myself, couldn't I? There we go. I'm gonna make sure I'm going side to side and not off the edge, right up to the edge. So let's close the garden green ink and move it out of the way. And I'm just going to set this aside for a moment and pull in a piece of basic white and here's my stamp. The outline for the stamp with the little seeds in it. So since we're going to emboss this, I'm going to rub this with my embossing buddy and then I'm going to ink my outline stamp with my Versamark and I want my seeds to be green so let's pull this up I'm using the brush tip of my old olive stamp and write marker and I'm going to color those seeds just going over them a second time Okay, and then my outline for my strawberry is going to be real red. So we're going to color that outline in real red. Make sure I'm getting all the way around on this stamp. getting further up, uh, getting away from the point of the brush tip to get some color. Okay, now we're going to huff and stamp. Okay, let's set that aside for just a moment. And then I'm going to bring in my clear embossing powder. And let's take a spoonful and sprinkle on. Okay, I've coated that well. Let's move this out of the way, no spilling needed. And I've got my heat tool here. And we're just going to heat it up a moment. And then I'm going to heat from behind so that I'm not spraying uh, any of those loose granules around and just kind of setting this. Okay, give that a little on the top, make sure everybody's set, turn off my heat tool, and then let's take our strawberry builder punch and put our berry in here. and punch that out. Of course, you always pick up a few stray bits um, when punching. Now I need to clean my stamp off, so I'm just going to do that over here, and then I'm going to do that again because I want uh, multiple strawberries. I'll be right back. Now that our strawberries are done, we need some greenery to go with it, and I've got that strip of 
basic white and the strawberry builder punch and I'm just going to punch out three sets of leaves and the um, topper piece for the strawberry. Let's dump that and I've got room for one more set here. Of course that's easier if I have it on the table but then I shake the camera. Okay, so let's move these down here and I want to bring in my Stamparatus and we're going to stamp those um, leaves that we've just punched. So let's fit them right in our slots here. Okay, and let's grab my plate for my leaves. I'm going to turn it this way and ink those in garden green. And then let's stamp. I just want to press all over there. And then I'm going to pull these off and put them right back in here because we want to add a little more color to them. So let me bring in this other plate. Let's take this. Oops. And we'll just turn this this way now. And I've got sponge daubers and I want my garden green and my old olive. I want my leaves to have a little two-tone. So let's put the old olive on first. It's a little lighter, so we're just going to go along a little bit of one edge here on the leaf and out on the tips of the little topper for the strawberry. And then we're just gonna come back in and ink everything, the rest of everything, I should say, with the garden grain. Okay. Just trying to make sure I've got enough ink on that. Now, let's close that lid and press. Didn't press hard enough on this. I'll use the heel of my hand. There we go. And I'm gonna just give this a quick press on the back side before I pick them up. Okay. So you can see they've got a little variegated color. I'm going to do the other two sets of these and I'll return in just a moment. Okay, so the leaves are done. And now we want to do our strawberries and I'm going to do a similar kind of thing with adding color to the strawberries, starting with a little Daffodil Delight. It's almost added it directly to my stamped embossed strawberry, so just a little bit there. Our strawberry is going to be in the ripening stage, not fully red ripe, and now some Flirty Flamingo. Just want to make sure I get enough color on there. And then finally, I want some real red. And we're going to just add the real red in everywhere else. Now you could stamp this one color at a time and then come back and add the color with the next color with the dauber. I'm just Trying to make sure I'm giving a good press here. And so I want some more real red down this side. I like my side that's um, got the Flirty Flamingo and the Daffodil Delight. I may amp up my Flirty Flamingo 
down here near the bottom, but I don't want any more yellow. Okay, and then I'm going to go one more time with that real red. Now, because this stamp has a little bit of a, a distressed look, that's why we're um, needing to add color uh, a couple of times. Okay, there we go. So let's pull this out, and I've got two more, and I'll be right back as soon as they're done. When you finish each of your strawberries, don't forget to take a cloth and give them a wipe so that you wipe the ink off your embossed lines. Now, next, uh, we are going to bring our leaves and blossoms back in that we did at the beginning, and we're just going to do a little quick coloring. So let's zoom in a little bit on these. Okay, and I've got my light and dark old olive and my light shaded spruce for this. So let me pull my caps off everything. And we'll start our coloring. So I'm going to start with some of the light shaded spruce down in here and then come in with my dark old olive over that. And I want to come back in with that shaded spruce, trying to create a color that is similar down here to um, garden green. And then just going to come out on the tips with the light old olive and blend the whole thing with the light old olive. So let's do this leaf since it's not touching the um, the other one. Give the other one a second to dry. And then our dark old olive. And another shot with this light shaded spruce. And then bring the whole thing together, blending with the light old olive. And then I'm just going to move down here for a minute Give those two leaves up there a moment to dry. You'll have less movement outside the lines if you let them dry first before coming back in for that leaf that touches them. That way your paper isn't too damp with the alcohol from the markers. And one more color with this light. And then bring it all together with the light old olive. So I'm going to keep working on these and I'll speed up this portion of the video. Okay, and one last bit of coloring we're going to do with the Light Daffodil Delight Marker. And I'm just going to come in to the flower centers here and give them just a tiny bit of color. Not looking to color all over the flowers. Okay, and that brightens them just a little. And then next, we're going to cut these out by hand using our paper snips and just make sure that you're turning 
the paper and not your snips. And you can be as detailed with your uh, cutting out as you care to be, going down into all of the spaces around the stems or leave the white down in there. That's entirely up to you. I think I'm going to cut some of this out. And of course, if you leave a little bit of white border, it helps the stamped image to pop a little bit instead of cutting right up on to um, the stamped line. But if you're more comfortable cutting right up to the stamped line, then please do that when you fussy cut your image. And of course you need a, a good pair of scissors, makes all the difference. If you haven't tried uh, the paper snips from Stampin' Up, you really should. I know in my in-person classes, when we try these versus uh, other pairs, uh, my class attendees are always so pleased with how lovely these are to cut with. And I'm still using my original pair that I purchased when I became a demonstrator over 10 years ago. Sometime I'll have to look up that start date and see just how many years it's been. I think we're coming up to 13 here. Okay, so I'll cut this one out and be right back. So we've got both of our stamped and colored pieces cut out. Let me just push them to the side. And next, I want to take a piece of the paper lattice. This comes in a 10-pack in the annual catalog, or you can find it in my Stampin' Up! store. And I'm going to take my Versamark pad and just kind of stroke it across here randomly, making sure as I look closely to see that we've gotten some ink on here. Okay, and then next I'm going to put this down on a piece of scrap paper and take my gold stamp and emboss powder and sprinkle across here. Just want to highlight a few little areas with uh, the gold. I don't want it to be gold all over. Okay, and I'm set that down carefully and sprinkle this back into the pot. And let me brush this loose powder away. And then let's heat up our heat tool. And as before, I'm going to heat from behind. And this is just going to highlight this uh, in a few places with the gold to add a little um, little bit of tex more texture because certainly the paper lattice has lots of lovely texture. But almost like uh, the idea of a verdigris but uh, with gold instead of with your copper that picks up that kind of uh, green tone as it oxidizes. Okay. Yeah, you can see that on camera, that nice little bit of gold. Okay, so now we're ready to put this together. 
but wait, I forgot the sentiment, so one more bit of stamping. We're going to take our garden green and stamp our sentiment on a scrap of basic white. Okay. And then let me close my ink pad and put it out of the way. And we're just going to cut this out, just following its shape a little bit. So it's a little more organic looking. Trim that off. And then come up here and round that. Okay. Now we're ready to put this together. So I've got my garden green card base that's cut at four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. And then I've got a piece of basic white that's four by five and a quarter. I've just opened this brand new bottle so I know there's plenty of glue. Center this and give it a light rub and close that up. And now I've got a piece of the In Good Taste designer paper and I'm going to adhere that with multi-purpose glue. Love the texture on the back of this as well. In fact, I love the textures in this whole pack of paper tiles and wood grains and fabric, knit fabric textures. Um, I've used so much of this and I sure am glad that during July this pack of paper is on sale. You can find a link in the description below to my store if you would like to see those sale papers. Okay, and then I'm just going to stick on a few uh, dimensionals to hold this up a little bit. I don't want my I don't want it glued flat. I think you lose some of uh, the interest in this but I'm only going to be adhering um, part of this left side. And let me just make sure I've got them in enough spots. I think I can do one more here and it not show. Okay. And kind of center this. Okay, next we've got our leaves and flowers, and I do want, uh, I can use a full-size dimensional behind that. Let's see if this will fit in here. It sure will. And then I think I'm going to go with a mini out here on this last flower. Let me put that one down and put dimensionals on this one. Okay. Just checking to make sure that dimensional behind both that double flower wasn't showing. And we'll arrange these so that they help to hide some of our dimensionals for that lattice, paper lattice piece. Okay. Let's 
All right, so now it's time to add some of our berries and leaves. Let's bring all those pieces in and make sure I've got three, three leaves and three toppers for our strawberries. So I'm going to go ahead and add this little piece to the top of each one of our strawberries using multi-purpose glue and trying not to get heavy-handed. I'm doing that today with the glue. And one more. Okay, now let's add some dimensionals to these. Each one of these can have a couple. And by putting them top and bottom instead of side by side, it'll make our layering a little bit easier. So, whoops. Give that glue a press instead of just setting it on. Now I do like to just lightly place things first. That way if I need to take them up, I can. Okay, and now let's tuck some of these leaves in behind. I'm going to use a little multi-purpose glue on the back of my leaf. Decide whether I want one, another one in here or whether I've got enough leafy things going on. So let's put some dimensionals on the back of our sentiment here. Oops. Not on my fingernails. Okay, I think I want a double stack of these. Let's put that on for just a moment. Oops, don't want my backing piece to come off. Not ready to stick this down yet. Okay, let's close that up. And then I've got um, some of the white baker's twine. And we just need a little bit of little bit of more texture in here and we're just going to do a, a single bow just trying to decide how big my loops are going to be I know I want the long trailing tails here okay let's move that out of the way and these out of the way and how about let's grab a glue dot here. And just stick that right on. And then we're going to stick our bow just right up in here. Let's get that glue dot underneath. There we go. And then, whoops, let's pull the backing off of these now. going to stick that right in here so it's tucked in with our berries and there we have our sweet strawberry card with some embossing and the paper lattice you can find all of today's supplies in my Stampin' Up! store if you're in the United States I appreciate if you do some of your shopping in my store 
give this video a thumbs up and share it with your card making friends. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell, you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Have a great day. Bye.